So this story begins when I saw Pierce Morgan talk to Andrew Tate. And I gotta be honest with you, I think what Andrew Tate is doing is sort of a neutral ground. You're probably looking at the title of the video and you're thinking to yourself, well, this is absolutely contradictory to what the title is saying. Of course, because you have to understand that there's a lot of people out there that really believe Andrew Tate betrayed the Muslims, in particular, the ones that were in England during this particular time right now that is going on with the likes of Nigel Farage and Tommy Robinson being blamed. So why is that important to bring up? Because in the previous video, I've gotten like 53 comments correcting the situation of Tommy Robinson saying that he did not encourage the riots in the first place. And if that's the case, and if that is true, and if that is the face value that Tommy Robinson wishes to uh, bring us on, then by all means, we're going to take it for face value because he hasn't really demonstrated anything that is out of his character, or out of his intentions. In other words, love or hate the guy, and I have my own opinions about the guy. He's always been consistent with his particular views, right? Uh, for one, uh, Tommy Robinson uh, got into it with local Nazis in the UK. And I got to be honest with you, that's a little bit strange considering the fact that a lot of people sort of accuse Tommy of being a Nazi himself. Well, the reality is he's not. But is he anti-Islamic or Islamophobic or xenophobic? Maybe not so much of a xenophobe because he does accept certain immigrants in the UK and are willing to, uh, I guess, tolerate them in a certain light. Like, for example, with the Polish... Uh, he seems to be okay with them. The Irish, obviously, uh, still a big immigrant group that migrates into the UK. And with that, he's sort of in favor with them, but not so much with the Muslims. And this is the conflict between him and Tommy Robinson. Uh, the conflict is that Andrew Tate does not like the remarks and the opinions that Tommy Robinson or Stephen Lennon in his real government name, uh, to be exact, uh, his views on Islam, he's absolutely against it. So now he's no longer friends with him. But in the convenience of relationships and how you tie people into uh, certain RICO charges like what we have here in the United States with gangs and mafias and whatnot... Uh, one of the things that they're trying to do right now is tie Tommy Robinson, Andrew Tate, and Nigel Farage all in the same boat. Now, I understand that Nigel Farage has sort of gone after Tommy Robinson, put him under the bus. He's saying, well, he was the one that uh, orchestrated this whole entire thing or whatever it is that he's uh, trying to convey, right? Uh is he right? Is he, uh, Maybe not, but this is what politicians do. They throw people under the wall. What about him? Donald Trump, Kamal Harris, the same thing. Oh, well, what about this? Or the, It's all in the same type of show. Nigel Farage is no different. The only difference is that he is a professional politician, unlike Tommy Robinson, who is unpolished, really uneducated, did great for himself as a uh, entrepreneur obviously he owned a lot of uh saloon shops saloon tanning shops go figure right you find a white population uh in a certain area and you throw a tanning saloon there and you get business great for him nonetheless tommy robinson used to be friends with andrew tate growing up when andrew tate used to train in luton by the way, a town that is notorious for producing a lot of ISIS recruits 
but then also you can look at the other side of that and say they've they were the home base of the EDL, the English Defense League, which is considered a hate group. Now, I want to be very fair and understanding to what it is that they live by in terms of the cause, right? I want to be very accurate. And I think that accuracy is understanding that they're not xenophobic, they're not racist, because they demonstrated that with having East Indian, or as you call them in the UK, Asian uh, partners, Sikh, Hindu, Muslim, all from the Indian subcontinent, and then they have black members as well, dudes that look like Leon Edwards in her squad. That's, that's real. But what's also real is that their main focus and their main hate and target is only Muslims. And now all of that manifested into this whole entire riot. And by the way, I got to be honest with you, with Andrew Tate, did he betray the Muslims? So let's get to him in this context right now. He drew a meme or had created a meme or shared a meme that was referencing uh, migrants or refugees in a very derogatory way, right? Which in the view of the liberal media, and by the way, whether it's the U.S. liberal media or the liberal tabloids that they have in the United Kingdom and things of that nature, they are all one and the same in terms of sensationalism, yellow journalism, as they call them. So in turn, they're going to make it look like Andrew Tate is against illegal immigrants or immigrants coming into the UK period. Now let's clarify what he really means. Here's something you got to understand though. As Muslims, and it may shock you that many of us feel this way, there's no such things as borders. Now you can call that new world orderism or globalism. Yes, all of that is actually classified in that matter. So that is how Muslims view the world. And at least if you look at it from an Orthodox Islamic Salafi point of view, and even some of the Shias may look at it like this, although they see Iran as sort of the main hub of their ideological setting or headquarters, or people that are the head of facilitating their causes around the world. For example, with uh, Hezbollah, which is a known terrorist organization that is of a Shia sect right, uh, affiliated with the Houthis in Yemen. And then on top of that, also the proxies that they have around the world that are working against the interests of the United States. For example, when you noticed during the uh, cargo raids that they had in response to, uh, I would assume, the Hamas, because there's affiliations with Hamas there too. Now, speaking of Islamic globalism, Obviously, for those of you that don't understand the world or have no education, please understand this, right? Al-Qaeda or ISIS or Daesh, as they are known in the Arab world, they are not in any way affiliated with Hamas. And I know that's hard for a lot of average Americans who have low IQ and really don't understand the world or have any uh, particular understanding of the Middle East or just have their understanding from their Fox News or their CNN uh, feed that they put in their brains on a daily basis as some sort of mental diet. They're not going to understand this, the nuances and the complexities that come with that. So why am I explaining that to you? Because for the same reason why a lot of people are not going to understand the complexities that Andrew Tate is operating under. Do I understand it? Of course, I understand the entire play and what he is trying to do. What he is trying to do, and here's something you got to understand, why I explain the whole Islamic globalism thing. If you're a true Muslim, you really shouldn't engage yourself in nationalistic or domestic affairs. And I know you may think in your mind that, well, that sounds irresponsible. How would you then deal with, let's say, the sanitation or the uh, municipal matters of certain uh, aspects of life? Well, okay, that is true. But... In this sense, we're talking about the politics of people 
crossing one border to another. In reality, there are certain factors that you have to take into consideration, such as tax inflations or taxes, extra taxes that you have to pay based on the fact that these people need assistance or whoever they are that is classified as uh, a refugee. But nonetheless, there's a consequence to that, and I understand, but in reality, a true Muslim should not engage themselves upon it. And what did Andrew Tate do? He went and engaged himself upon it, which only created more misguidance to his message, misunderstanding, but not only that, not delving into the complexities that the other people around the world would be willing to break down if they had, let's say, the right amount of time. But most people don't. So here's what Andrew Tate meant. What he's trying to say is, you know what, in order for us to prevent these types of deviants or killers or child rapists or however you want to word it, in order to keep them away, you have to have order. All he's calling for was order. Now, was that a betrayal towards Muslims in any way? To some people, they look at it as, as that. And the reason why... I think is because there are a lot of unprovoked attacks against quote unquote Asians or Pakistanis or Indian subcontinents, the best way that they, uh, I guess, describe it in the UK. But yeah, there's a lot of hate crime motivated attacks being uh, perpetuated against them. So this is the reason why they feel that way. Now, look, I'm not here to present to you what is right or what is wrong between them. I'm here to present to you the reality of what is going on. So it it's not so much that he is anti-Islamic because he's already proclaimed his loyalty toward Islam and the faith of Islam. But at the same time, from the Orthodox